We are finally back with the conclusion to the PS5 SSD saga, which has been many months in the making, mostly because I had a charity live stream where I raised $150,000 to cure my son's rare disease. We raised $151,000. That's insane. Thank you guys. But we finally have the RAID card here to test out on the PS5. And in case you don't remember exactly what's going on, I won't hold it against you because it's been a while since we did the original video, but let me catch you up to speed. Sony released the firmware update that allows you to use the PS5's SSD internal slot right here so that you can upgrade the storage. I decided to take things a little bit farther and use an M.2 to PCI Express expansion card, which then allowed me to use something like this to run SSDs onto the PS5. It doesn't affect the performance at all and it works totally well. However, the reason I don't want to use this card anymore is because it's a software-based RAID solution so that when you actually initialize it, this PlayStation can't actually implement the RAID. So that's where we come to this hardware-based solution. This is the High Point SSD 7505 PCI Express 4.0 hardware RAID card. This means that you can actually implement RAID and that little chip right there is what actually keeps the raid going. However, just so I don't get everybody's hopes up, you gotta keep watching till the end to figure out what happens. There are a million reasons why this won't work, but I'm gonna do my best to try to get it going. And the eagle-eyed amongst you might be recognizing that I have a GPU on my table and might be wondering what exactly this is about. Well, that was probably the most requested thing that I try out with the PS5 now that I have a PCI Express extension on it, was to put a GPU on it and see what happens. And I have a pretty good idea of what's gonna go down, but since everybody asked for it, we're just gonna make it happen. And we're gonna make it happen after I make things happen because of today's video sponsor who helps pay for all of this crap. Today's UFD Tech video is brought to you by Drop, and more specifically, their Sennheiser HD 58X headphones. I've had these for three, four years now? I don't, I don't know exactly how long, but they have been an amazing pair of open back headphones that I've used every day since that I've got them. I rearranged my words, but you know what I'm saying, and the reason we're talking about them today is because they are on sale for the price of only $139, down from their usual price of $170. But it's not just me who loves them, all right? They have over 3,600 five-star reviews, and they're honestly really spectacular. Open back headphones based on Sennheiser's HD 580 platform, and they have 15 drivers which makes it easier to power from mobile devices or audio players and they have an emphasis on clear extended bass with a solid transient response and a smooth but clear upper mid range these things are absolutely impeccable if you're listening to music or if you're trying to edit your audio on your videos just like i do i don't my editor edited solve this but they were using these when they still lived here reese wanted to take these back to south africa and i said nay i'm keeping them because i'm probably going to promote them again at some point and they're amazing you're not allowed to have them reese because i wanted to keep them but you don't have to fight with me over HD 58Xs anymore. You can pick them up for $139 at the link in the video description. One of the things that I love most about these is that they actually have a replaceable cable so that in case you, you know, break it, get it snagged on something, you can just order a new cable and make sure that you're off to the races. So go pick up the HD 58Xs at the link in the video description, dro.ps forward slash UFD hyphen HD 58X, or you can just click the link in the video description. Big thanks to the drop for sponsoring today's episode as well as being a sponsor of the charity live stream. All right, now that I have the portable monitor set up, it's trying to see what the 6900 XT does once it's installed to a PS5. So we need to get our M.2 card installed first up. M.2 card goes in first. GPU gets slotted onto the PCI Express slot right here. And initially I was planning on using this 450 watt power supply but it only has two eight pins. And as you can see, this GPU has three eight pins. So I need a new power supply to test All right, out. this is the only one that I'm aware of that can actually work. It's the 1650 watt power supply I have in my test bench. This is gonna be difficult to get it all set up at once. Okay, that's one. And there's three. Okay, we've got it all set up. Now it's time to power this PC. By the way, this 1650 watt power supply is such a big deal that it has like a completely different cable than normal because it, it, it's so much power. We also need to power the SATA off of the actual M.2 riser card, so we'll do that on the other power supply, which I've normally been using for this. Okay, we got multiple aspects to running this. I gotta turn on the GPU, I gotta turn on the PCI Express riser, and I need to turn on the PS5. So 
I'm gonna try to do that all at once. This power supply should be on, that's running, which means the PCI Express riser is on. Now it's time to turn on this PC. There we go, it sounds like that's on. We're not getting any power spinning up on this GPU, but maybe I need to power up the PS5 first, which we will now go ahead and do. Oh, GPU spins! Did you see that? I turned it on and we got fans spinning on the GPU. Oh, I love it, yes! All right, what's gonna happen with the display? My guess is, you know what? My guess is it doesn't matter right now. We got, we got life. What's happening? PlayStation logo. It says a problem occurred in the system software the last time you used your PS5. Oh man, explain the problem. Will do. I installed and capitalized this bad boy. RX6900XT GPU. It broke -y. I think I think that's an acceptable explanation to, to Sony. Accept a report. What are they gonna do with that? It's not relevant information. Thanks for your cooperation. You're welcome, Sony. Oh, you're just gonna load in now. Nope, got nothing. Let's see if it detects it in the system settings somehow. Uh, storage is where it would be. Yeah, we got nothing. But I have a what if question. I know the answer. I still need to try it. What happens when I take the display out from the PS5 and I plug it into the 6900 XT? What does the 6900 XT show us? No signal. Come on. Come on, Sony. You didn't, you didn't account for this. Come on, can you give me like custom software that allows me to run at least the display off of the GPU? Rip, that's dead. All right, well, I should probably shut down the PS5 before I go and remove stuff because I don't want to brick anything. Okay, PlayStation 5's off, time to undo this monstrosity. What happens when you put an RX 6900 XT into a PS5? Absolutely nothing, what did you expect? I mean, I got fans spinning up, so I, I count that as a win, right? Like, the GPU did get power. Okay, now it's time for the real star of the show, which is this High Point SSD RAID controller. Obviously, I said last time if we got however many likes that I would buy this, it costs $650. You add on the 100 to 150, I don't remember, $200, 150 for each of these drives. That's four times 150, that's another $600. I'm $1,200 in deep on this SSD setup. Thankfully, I've had most of this lying around except for the RAID card. But I think first, before we go in and try to initialize the RAID card on a PC, what we should try to do is see if it recognizes a single SSD on the setup first without doing anything else. So we'll go ahead and just uh, do it the easy way first. Try to ease into this and see if we can get a little bit more complicated as time goes on. 1980 Pro installed on the high point RAID card. Time to boot the PS5, see what happens. There is no physical indication anywhere that this is working. Maybe if I plug in the uh, fan, it'll show me that this thing is actually receiving power, but I don't want to accidentally knock out the SSD while it's running either. This is a dangerous game you're playing, Brett. You should have done this beforehand. All right, there we go. Is that fan working? That fan's not working. You know why the fan's not working? Because Brett didn't turn on the power supply, so of course it's not gonna work. Good job, Brett. All right, shut down the PS5. Okay, now power source on. There we go. Now this should spin up when the PS5 turns on. Does it? Yes, there we go. PS5 telling the high point rate card to turn on. Fans going full blast. That's exactly what you wanna see right now. That fan's spicy. All right, do we have an SSD registered? No, we do not. I have encountered this issue before where if it doesn't have an SSD that it actually notices, then it won't do anything. Oh, that raid card's very spicy. You know what? Let's load up all four ports and see what happens. Maybe it needs more. Nobody does this, so I'm just experimenting, seeing how it works. There's no manual to read for this, by the way. Hey, High Point, what do I do when I want to use four SSDs on a PS5? I see no LED blinky blinky on here, which I'm not sure those are LEDs that are supposed to blinky blinky, which I would imagine that they're not because you put this cover on and then you can't see anything. Oh, that's my favorite part of fans. Okay, we've got nothing. Um, 
That's a little concerning, especially considering the fact that, uh, at least based on what I read, even without initializing the hardware RAID on this thing, the there should be, like you should be able to run the first drive in non-RAID mode uh, just by plugging this thing in. Okay, before we get it officially set up and I call anything of this initial setup a loss, I do know that the last few times that I've done this, that the PS5 kind of needs a palette cleanser um, in that like if you plug in an SSD and get that initialized, which is what I'm gonna do here, that it allows you to actually do more stuff with it from that point on. So installing a 980 Pro without the adapter, and then once that has the SSD installed in it, what I'll go ahead and do is put that on the first slot and see if the PS5 recognizes it at that point. Reformat the PS5 SSD, let's make that happen, and then we'll go ahead and install it into the RAID card. Read speed, great, we're good to go. It's been formatted. Reloading database. All right, we got the M.2 storage appearing perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and shut this bad boy down. All right, first slot on the RAID card. Install the RAID M.2 riser. Moment of truth. Okay, booting just fine, which it would if it actually fully recognized the SSD and that wouldn't be a problem. So let's go ahead and go into settings. Check the storage, is anything there? No M.2 storage, nothing there. All right, this is actually a little bit worse than the software RAID card. Uh, this would at least recognize it on the first slot without any intervention, but let me go ahead and put all four drives on the RAID card, get the RAID set up using the high point software on the computer, and then we'll try this one more time. So let's go ahead and just like properly install the cooler with one screw, make sure it's attached while it's doing all of this work. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth. And honestly, before we get into it, the, the truth is based on everything that I read with this card, you need to initialize it first with its driver. And I don't know that the PlayStation is going to do that. And I can't think of a way to initialize the RAID driver before it gets installed onto the PS5. We'll see what happens right now. Maybe all four drives will show up and it'll actually indeed work, but, uh, I, I probably spent $650 for nothing. All right, it's not even registering like it wasn't before. And let's head over to storage and see what pops up. Absolutely nothing. We got, we got nothing going on here. So that, it kind of confirms my suspicions. Um, I had the bad thought of taking the M.2 adapter, plugging it into the computer, initializing the RAID driver, and because this power supply is supplying power to the card, maybe I could get it to come over with the power still enabled and then plug it in. But I tried to do that and it just, it shuts the power off from the the card, like watch, as soon as I take this out of the PS5, it's, it's just gonna power down. So there's no way that I know that I can keep power to the card halfway through. See, the power just shuts off and the, the drive's done at this point. So there's no way that I know to keep this card activated after the drivers are initialized and then put them into the PS5. I thought I was gonna be able to overcome that limitation because before, for whatever reason, the card was staying on, at least this card was staying on whenever the M.2 wasn't installed and the power supply was on, but this one doesn't behave like that. And so the way I thought I was gonna overcome these limitations uh, doesn't exist. And that's a little frustrating. That's kind of the conclusion of the video is that I can't get this to work. Um, I've tried to find other PCI Express 4.0 RAID cards out there. Haven't been able to find any. If you have any suggestions on how we could potentially get this thing to work, maybe leave them down below in the comments. I would love to hear from you uh, on a way that we could maybe overcome this limitation, get the fastest PS5 SSD out there by using a RAID card. But as it stands now, I can't, I can't get this one to work which sucks, I can't even get it to appear with one drive, which is it's a bummer. So I just have to put a, a drive in my PS5 and use it like normal, which is kind of sad. Can't have a RX 6900 XT just sitting out and about with the GPU just floating and giving me display out. None of that's happening. 
$650 down the tubes, but I did it for you guys because you liked the last one so much. And let me know what other experiments you want me to try with, whether it's the Xbox, the PlayStation, with a PC. Give me your ideas down below in the comments. In case you want to see what happens when you try to put an Xbox SSD into the PS5, you should check out this video that I did right over there where I did exactly that. And with that being said, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.